Okay, this is a much awaited machine. Uh, since we sold um, the Husqvarna Viking Model 2000 CM, uh, oh, about a couple weeks ago, I guess it is, uh, we've gotten a lot of inquiries. When are you going to sell your next Viking Husqvarna? When are you going to sell it? Here it is. And uh, you know what? This is just a phenomenal machine. Talking a little bit about the power of it, it has four times the power of a Singer Featherweight because it has a 1.5 amp motor. It's got two times the power of a Singer 201 or a Singer 1591, really any of the Singer heavy, heavy duty machines. Uh, it also has greater power than the FOF 130 or the FOF 230. Has power of, uh, again, 1.5 amps, and the max for those FOF machines is usually, usually going to be right around 1.1 amps. So you'd have to take one of those FOFs and combine it with a featherweight to have the same amount of power as this Husqvarna Viking Model 21A. This machine was born back in 1951, but first of all, I have to explain again that this is King Gustavus. What's the significance of him? He's the king that actually decreed uh, the drilling and grinding plant and musket barrel plant that eventually grew into the Husqvarna Viking Sewing Machine Company right around 1872. It was about 75 years after that first Viking Husqvarna rolled off the plant that this beautiful machine was born. So with that little snippet of history on the Husqvarna Viking Sewing Machine Company, which is really, I mean, just an incredible legacy of fine engineering. We have to say goodbye to King Gustavus. And no, you can't buy him. I had a couple of people email me and say, hey, I missed out on the sewing machine. Can I at least get the king? No, he's not for sale. So I'm going to move him back over here to the side. Let me also do something else before we launch into this machine. Um, I mentioned that just a few weeks ago we sold uh, the 1958 Husqvarna Viking 2000 CM. We oftentimes, because our customers are so happy with the entire transaction and certainly the quality of the machine, which again, I've got my own bias, but I think we sell the best machines on eBay, I really do. We service them beyond anything I've ever seen another seller doing. At any rate, enough, enough bravado. Let me share a little bit of what, what this customer wrote after uh, her experience. She writes, hey Scott, I am definitely in love with this Viking. She is everything I expected and is going to help me keep up with the many denim jeans coming my way. Uh, this customer happens to be uh, 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 involved in tailoring quite a bit, by the way. Last week, uh, I got a job for a zipper. It had to be replaced on a pair and it was sheer torture on my fof. Don't get me wrong. It's a beauty of a machine, but has no guts for the thick, heavy fabrics. I wish I had known I would be the winner of the Viking. I would have put that customer on hold. I have several pairs waiting for hems, as well as a leather biker's vest to make smaller, so you can guess what fun I will be having next week. I did enjoy the unique experience of unwrapping. It took almost an hour, but wow, I appreciate all the detail. It would have stood up to an F5 tornado. I'm sure. I have it up and running already and the bobbins came today too, so I'm ready to roll. Oh yes, the yummy chocolate. By the way, in this listing for this machine, we're going to be including similar type chocolate too. Uh, oh yes, the yummy chocolate bars are a super sweet break treat. I'm going to savor a bit each day so they will last a little longer. And then she shares some other comments beyond that. You know, this is really what, what I strive for when it comes to developing that personal relationship with the buyer and giving them the total customer experience. Uh, what fun that is. What a pleasure. Okay, let's move into this very cool machine. Again, a machine born back in 1951. We're going to start on the bottom right, just above where it says Sweden Automatic. Why does it say Sweden Automatic? Well, you'll see that in a little bit when I demonstrate the bobbin winding. This control right here, if you turn it clockwise to the right, is going to allow you to very quickly lower those feed dogs. So right now the feed dogs are down. You can do your freehand embroidery or whatever else you're wanting to do and then simply rotate it back counterclockwise to make those feed dogs pop right back up again. Okay, this right here is a control for stitch width. Uh, 
right now we're set on zero which means we're ready to do our heavy duty sewing we're always going to set it on zero so we can get that straight stitch but if you want to access one of the three cams that we're going to be including with this Viking Husqvarna and let me reach across the table here and grab this beautiful original Husqvarna uh, accessory box I'll take off the top and give you a first glimpse and you'll see these in the photos obviously as well we're going to be including a wide range of different uh, attachments that will give you a lot of flexibility with this machine. Also you can see across the top we've got a wonderful compartment for uh, the bobbins as well. I'm going to take one of those out because we're going to be using it shortly to demonstrate that bobbin winding. And then if you pop the top off you can see in the bottom we've got two of those three cams. This, these are cams A and C and then we've got uh, cam B already inserted in the machine. We've got some screwdrivers, a hem guide, and just a variety of other goodies that we're going to be including uh, with this listing uh, as well. I love these containers. What a great way to store all the wonderful attachments that Husqvarna Viking includes uh, with their machines. Okay, since I already am holding this, why don't I demonstrate real quick and show you uh, the bobbin winding. Now, most machines, if you're going to wind a bobbin, you've always got to disengage that clutch or in some other way uh, take that drive out of there uh, you know that, that powers that uh, shaft so the needle isn't moving when you're winding the bobbin and then you always have to re-engage that clutch again there's a couple steps involved with that the Swedish are really smart they've made it basically a, a two-step process you take this bobbin and I'm going to kind of lift this machine and it's not a lightweight at all so the camera can at least get kind of a side shot here a little bit this is going to be our bobbin winding area right here. If you want to disengage that clutch, you simply slide this bobbin on, and then I can right away step on that foot control, but I'll just show you real quick by rotating the machine a little bit. You can see right here we've got our spool, our main spool for feeding thread for sewing. This is going to be our spool pin right here for winding a bobbin, and you can almost catch a glimpse of it on the back here. There's a single thread guide where you'll come off of here through that thread guide and then right on the back of the machine over here, kind of hard to see, you've got our tension control guide too that's going to then follow through right over to the bobbin. So we popped it on, I'm going to step on the uh, foot control does that run quiet or what? Taking it off, our bobbin's all nice and full we're going to go ahead and remove that bobbin and notice at no point will my hands do anything other than rotate the machine. All right, rotating that heavy machine back. And then, by simply putting this fabric underneath the presser foot, I'm going to sew off and listen closely when that clutch re-engages. We haven't done anything other than take this bobbin off of that bobbin winder and that's where the automatic name comes in associated with this particular machine. Alright, so here we go. You can hear that just real soft little click. That's the clutch automatically re-engaging again. Go ahead and get that thread back in place so we're ready to move on walking through the rest of the machine. And, you know, my purpose in demonstrating that is really to show you the ease of winding a bobbin and the beauty of the automatic in relation to that clutch automatically disengaging and automatically re-engaging as soon as you take that bobbin off. But I might as well just show it because it just sews beautifully. That's a gorgeous stitch in every respect. Uh, the spacing, the formation, and, of course, a perfect lock-in as well. And I love this stiffener. This is a stiffener that we... Uh, uh, discovered and it does a wonderful job when you're doing decorative sewing to really maintain the integrity of those stitch patterns. You'll see that a little bit later in another video where we'll demonstrate how easy it is to set this machine for decorative sewing as well. Again it comes with the three cams and uh, it just does a beautiful job in that respect as well. So let me set this stuff to the side and I will also set this owner manual over here. A lot of stuff to cover on this machine so just hang in there with me. Uh, I know that people love all the details so we try to cover everything. Okay, 
So back to this control right here. We've already covered dropping the feed dogs. We covered bobbin winding. We covered all that. Uh, this again is going to be our stitch width control uh, for straight stitching, as we just did after that clutch was reengaged. We obviously have it set on zero, but if you're going to be doing decorative sewing or sewing a zigzag, you would obviously move it within the range between one and four. This control right up here is stitch length, and this uh, Viking Husqvarna 21A has about as wide of a stitch length variation as you can possibly get. Anything from five stitches per inch all the way down to 30 stitches per inch. And uh, by pushing this button right here in the middle, you can quickly ac access reverse sewing. And then when you want to resume sewing forward again, just release the button. Let me show you an example of a gorgeous applique that we did using this machine. And you can see uh, this inner area, that's, that's not drawn. This is painted here. Uh, but this is all stitched. So you can see just a wide representation of that stitch length uh, demonstrated through this applique. And obviously as you move on the outer edges, those stitches are going to be closer to that oh, five to six, seven stitches per inch. But we've done some real fine work as well. If you look real close, like on this inner curve right here, we're getting pretty close to that 20 to 25 stitches uh, per inch. But the final result is just a gorgeous representation of what you can do when you've got a machine as spectacular as this. And uh, let me simply say that the, the quality of the tool really relates to the quality of the work. Uh, so you are just as capable with some practice and some creative spark to generate a gorgeous project like this. Okay, back to the machine again. And uh, I've already covered this area of stitch length. Moving over to this control area right here, this does a couple of things. And I'm going to get my work out again, lifting this machine again and kind of rotating it forward so the camera can hopefully get a shot of the side here where you can see uh, a series of numbers, basically uh, numbers one through five. What that's all about is I already showed you in this accessory uh, case right here that we're going to be including these two cams plus the one that's in the back, cams A, B, and C. This is going to allow you to access uh, those cams. Uh, if you want to, for example, and you know what, it's, it, it may help if I actually show you in the book. Let me reach over here and grab the book. If you want to access, see I just love the way Swedish, uh, the Swedish do the books. Even here they're showing you how to insert the cam right here. Uh, step by step, I mean, they make it absolutely, um, you know, simple, very, very simple. Also, I kind of like here they've captured in this photograph that wonderful steel tooth uh, belt drive that powers that 1.5 uh, amp motor. Yeah, I mean, just unprecedented power, and you don't have any slippage at all because of that, that design feature. Okay, let me fold this back. What I was talking about with this control. You can see right now, like I said, we have cam B in the back. So you're going to have a choice of these stitch patterns right here. On every single one of the cams, you're going to have a zigzag. And they do that specifically so that if you're sewing one of these decorative stitches and then you want to move right into a zigzag, uh, you already have that on the cam. So each cam is going to have basically four decorative stitches, a zigzag, and then you always have access to that straight stitch as well. So if we were to want to set this particular machine to sew, let's say uh, this pattern right here, pattern number two, we would simply set these, uh, these two parameters, really. You'd set the stitch width for four. Remember again, this is stitch width right here. So we would rotate that to four. You would then set your stitch length to 0.3. We're at four right now because we did a straight stitch after we dis after we re-engaged the clutch. So I'm going to rotate it clockwise. We're still going. We're down to three stitches per inch, two stitches per inch, one stitch per inch. We're still going smaller. Look at this. All the way down to 0.5, and we got to go all the way down to 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.3. Okay. And then the final thing we do is we have to select that stitch pattern. So we would select pattern two. So all the way out is going to be pattern one, 
just give me a second here. And then pattern two. I've got to kind of lean in real quick and just see. There we go. Okay. So now we have a uh, pattern two. It's a lot easier when you're sewing by yourself and you don't have to wonder about where the camera is shooting. So with those three simple steps, we basically have selected this pattern. We obviously have cam B in the back. We selected pattern two by setting this to two on here where it slides in and out. We set the stitch width to, to four. We set the stitch length to 0.3. And with that, you can simply sew that particular pattern. And as a matter of fact, why don't I do that right now just to save a step. Just have to get my material ready real quick. I was going to do that as a separate video, but it probably makes more sense just to do it right now. And I am getting my workout lifting this machine repeatedly. So I'm going to slide that material underneath the presser foot. And the presser foot going down. And again, the stitch pattern that we're going to be sewing is pattern two on cam B, and we've already done all the settings. So it'll look something close to that. And again, with any decorative stitch, depending on where you set those settings, uh, you can get an entirely different look. So you really do have a limitless number of uh, pattern uh, modifications that you can generate. Okay, here we go. Good of a job in keeping that material flat, but all right, let me give that a quick clip. And you can see right there that is just a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern in every respect. And the same on the on the lock-in on the back. Look at how gorgeous that lock-in is on the back. So many of you watching this video may even be saying, Hey Scott, thanks for showing all that stuff, but I'm not I'm not really interested in the decorative stuff. I just want a 1.5 amp. Swedish made Viking Husqvarna machine to sew heavy duty, to do leather, to do all that heavy duty stuff. Not a problem, but at some point this may prove to be helpful for you and it certainly is a great benefit to have basically 12 additional stitches that are decorative utility that you can access through one of those three camps. So, alright, back to the machine and I am covering a lot, I know that. Back to the machine, I'll just show you real quick on the back. Uh, this is obviously the two spool pins that are on the machine. This is the one that we would use for winding a bobbin. This is the main feed. Threading this machine is pretty simple. We come from here through this single thread guide. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the machine back down. We come across the top of the machine through this other thread guide, down through the tension control area, up over this spring for tension control, underneath this little thread guide, up to the arm, and then finally all the way down to that presser foot. And you can see by me putting my finger underneath there, we have absolutely a huge amount of clearance underneath that presser foot. So if you're looking to do heavy duty quilting or any other heavy duty sewing, uh, it's so easy to fit a ton of stuff underneath there. Also, I didn't show it before, but here is an easy access also to the light if you need to change it out. It simply rotates down, you change the bulb out, and then just pop that right back up into place again. Also easy access as well uh, to the faceplate area for lubrication purposes or for any other reason if you need to access that. Also to adjust uh, the presser foot pressure as well. So the Swedish are really smart when it comes to engineering uh, and design in my opinion. Okay, kind of drop down with me back to this bed. I want to talk a little bit about this bed area and also talk about the harp space. Grab my, Husk, my little Husqvarna measuring tape here. It's actually not by Husqvarna, but we'll say it is for these purposes. We're talking a, a harp space of approximately eight inches across between the pillar and the needle. That's quite a bit of clearance. Width, we're looking at clearance of also eight inches across the harp area. And then vertical clearance, we're looking at about about five inches 
of vertical clearance for turning material. So eight by eight by five, that's about as good as it gets when it comes to a great heavy duty all metal machine that will do quilting and other heavy duty sewing. Now that's not as good as it gets. I'm gonna rotate this uh, tape measure around. Look at the overall bed length. You're talking about 15 inches from the pillar all the way to the end of that bed. So when you talk about wanting to have workspace, I don't think you can do any better than a Husqvarna Viking 21A when it comes to overall workspace and overall harp space as well on all those dimension fronts. You know what? I can't say enough good things about this Viking Husqvarna. Again, able to do heavy duty, twice the power of any of the Singer big boy machines, more power uh, by about 0.4 or 0.5 amps than any of the FOF machines that are out there. It's just, it really is the, the quilter's dream and the heavy duty sewer's dream. It's just a magnificent machine. Uh, and uh, if that's not enough, you know, all the stuff that I've covered, which is unbelievably extensive, but that's the way we do it. You know what, if this isn't enough to get you just totally stoked and excited about bidding on this machine to win, we uh, are gonna add a sweet bonus uh, just as our wonderful customer from Texas alluded to in her note that I shared at the beginning of this introduction. We're also going to be including a wonderful project break in this delicious milk chocolate and also this premium dark chocolate as well. If you've never tried this brand of European chocolate, I'm telling you one thing, it's to die for. And it's a perfect way, if you're working on a long project or you're doing a lot of quilting, it's a perfect way to take a break so that you can come back rejuvenated and just launch back into things again. That's not it. We're also going to be including, although I won't be demonstrating it in any of our videos, this embroidery hoop as well. You'll see this, though, in the owner's uh, instruction manual where you're going to be dropping those feed dogs, stretching some material over these hoops, and then going to work on doing some sort of fun embroidery work uh, with this machine as well. So this is also going to be included uh, with this incredible listing as well. Along with, as a reminder, uh, this original Husqvarna box, the three cams, and all the other goodies that you'll see in the photographs. So make sure you check out our other videos as well where we're going to demonstrate the incredible, incredible power of this Viking Husqvarna Model 21A.